What's up guys, Justin here with thecgessentials.com. So in today's video, I wanted to kick off our new series on how to create and edit materials inside of Blender. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so we're gonna have a whole playlist of different tutorials on materials in here. Um, you can check that out by visiting thecgessentials.com slash materials. Um, but I want, what I wanted to do is I wanted to create a multiple part series talking through the different aspects of creating materials. And so first off, what we want to do is we want to talk a little bit about materials just in general in Blender, how you can apply them and how you can adjust them. And so the first thing that you want to make sure that you do is you want to make sure that you are not in solid mode. You want to make sure that you are in material preview mode or rendered mode. And generally you're gonna do most of your work inside of material preview mode. That's gonna be important because otherwise your materials are not going to show up. But, um, so inside of Blender, basically each object has a series of slots that you can apply materials to. And you can find this by selecting an object Right, so you can click on any of these. Um, notice how my Bonnie model actually has materials applied to it. And you can select any of these and then you wanna scroll down to the option for material properties. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna give you access to the different materials that are in your model and specifically applied to this object. And so notice how as of right now, there is no material applied to this plane in this model. But let's say that we wanted to add one. So what we can do is we can click on the button right here for material properties after selecting the object. And then you can either click on the drop down right here. That'll give you access to the materials that are already in your models, or you can click on the button for new. And so when you click on the button for new, notice what that does is that adds a new material in here, but your model currently looks exactly the same. Right, And the reason that your model looks exactly the same is because we haven't actually adjusted this material at all, so it's just kind of this like white color. And so notice how when we click on our material and we scroll down below, this is going to give us access to a number of different aspects or different things that are going to affect the way that your material looks. So these can be very simple, like the color. So if you click on the base color right here and adjust this, notice how the color inside of that material is going to change. So if I wanted this to be a blue material, I can click and drag this up here. And so that base color is going to drive the color that's inside of your model. Now, there are two kinds of materials. I, I guess there's more than two, but we're gonna focus on these two for right now. So you can either apply just kind of a color in here, or you could also apply an image to this. And um, basically what that would do is that would, um, that would basically show the image on the surface in here. That's what you would use to show like a brick or something like that. Now, there are some other things you can do with like procedural materials, which we're not going to talk about too much in this video, but we may get into a little bit more in this series. But for now, let's focus on our object and the materials that are applied to it. So if we look at this object right now and we scroll up, this has a blue material applied to it. Well, notice how if I select this and tab into edit mode, this gives me the option to select the pieces of my model that have that material applied to them. And it also has buttons in here for deselecting and assigning. Well, let's say that we didn't want just like a blanket blue material applied to this object. What we could do is let's say that we wanted to change the color of this tile right here. We could click on the little plus button right here and we can add a second material slot to this object. Now, when you add a second material slot to this object, what that means is that means you have the ability to create another material and put it in that slot and edit and adjust it. So in this case, let's say we wanted like a red material like this. So notice how what I've done is I've come in here and I've created a red material in addition to the blue material. Now, if I click off of this, notice how there's no actual red material in the model yet. The reason why is because we created a material, but we currently have the blue material assigned to all of the faces that are in here. Well, let's say we selected this face. Notice how I can come in here. I can select this red material and I can click on the option for assign. Well, as soon as I do that, what that does is that assigns a red material to whatever I have selected in here. So I could do that again over here. Well, now I have a red and a blue material in here. And notice how if I click on the option for select, that's going to select all the objects 
that have that material applied to them like this. So I can do the same thing. I'm gonna go ahead and deselect everything first, but now if I click on select with the blue, notice how the blue is what's been selected in here. So you can select different things about the surface in here, or specifically you can select different surfaces in here that have different materials applied to them using a select function. Now, one of the cool things about this is first off, let's label these. So I'm just gonna double click on this and I'm gonna call this blue color right here. Notice how that changes the name of the material. I can double click on this one and I can call it red color like this. Well now, let's say that we wanted to apply this to another object in our model. We don't need to go create another color or another material in order to do that. Instead, what I can do is let's say that I was to tab into edit mode with the cylinder. So I'm just gonna do an alt click in here so that I have all of these selected and then I'm gonna go up to select. I'm gonna do a checker deselect. So I get every other one of these like this. Well now, let's say that I wanted to apply that red material to this. What I can do is I can just click in here and notice how the materials that I've created already show up inside of this model like this. So what that means is that means I can take that red material and apply it or assign it to this object right here. Now, one thing that you may want to do is notice how right now it applied it to basically everything in this object. We don't necessarily want that. So what we might do is we might create like an overall material that's just kind of a blank color. And I'm just going to tap A and I'm gonna assign that to everything. Well then, I could come in here, I could do an alt click and do my checker deselect and then select that red color and assign it to all of these. Then I'm gonna do the same thing over here, checker deselect, but then this time, I'm going to click on the drop down. Actually, I'm going to add another material. I'm gonna click on the drop down right here and I'm gonna bring in this blue color and I'm going to assign that, whoops. And we wanna make sure that we've selected the right thing. So in this case, what I could do is I could select all of these faces, go into that red color and do a deselect, and then assign the blue color to everything else, like this. And so one of the things that I wanna note about this though is when you assign this in here, or you bring this in here, notice how these are currently linked materials. And what that means is that means that these materials are accessing the same data set. So if I was to go into my blue color, I was to make an adjustment, Notice how that blue color is going to change everywhere I have that applied in my model. The reason for that is because those are linking back to the same data. And notice how you can see how many different objects are linking to that data by looking at this little box right here, right? And so what that means is that means that the colors in here are being used by multiple different users. And so if you didn't want that, right? If you wanted the blue color on this object to not be linked to this one, what you can do is you can select it, come over here and click on this button right here. Notice what that does is that creates a copy of that color that's different than the color on this one. Now, if I come in here and I make that adjustment, notice how those objects are no longer linked. So you can use that in order to really quickly um, create custom colors that aren't linked across your model. Okay, and so up until this point, we've been focusing mostly on the color of our object that's in here. But let's say that we wanted to render out an object that looked a little more realistic. Well, one of the things that you might've noticed, and we'll go ahead and create a new color for this sphere, maybe make it like a green or something simple like that. You might've noticed there's a bunch of other things in here that if you mess around with them in this mode, you can like kind of see some changes, but not a ton. Most of these things, whoops, most of these things down here have to do with the way that your material is going to react to light and therefore are a little bit more important in rendered mode. And so remember that rendered mode is basically a mode that's going to generate lighting or use lighting in order to calculate the way an object should look. And so I've currently created kind of a lighting setup in here just so we can kind of see this. It's just a couple of uh, rectangle lights that are kind of shining at this object, but let's jump over into EV rendered mode. So I'm just gonna click in here like this. Um, I'm just gonna double check that I'm on EV, which I am. And so we can now take a look at this. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna go back into my material settings. Notice how some of the aspects of these objects are going to affect the way that this looks. So for example, if I bring my roughness 
down, then I'm gonna go ahead and right click on this object and do a shade smooth so that it shows up as a smooth object. But notice how as I adjust my roughness, I get different kinds of reflections on this surface, right? A lower level of roughness is going to basically give me smoother or more reflections on my object. So notice how I can actually see the lights reflecting off of this object right here. You could also turn your metallic to something like one um, in order to make an object look like it's metal if you wanted it to be metal. But you have all of these different things down here that are going to affect different aspects of the way that your materials look. We're not gonna get way in depth on this right now, but just note that that's what some of these other maps are. Now there are other kinds of shaders in here um, that are going to change the kind of material that you have. So for example, right now we have this in as a principled BSDF, which you're gonna use a high percentage of the time. However, if you change this to a different kind of shader, so let's say I change this to like a glass shader, notice how the way that this interacts with light is going to be different. So you can use some of these presets in order to create things like glass. You can use this in order to create more like translucent materials. If you want to do that, you can use these different shader types in order to do different things. But I will say most of the time you are probably going to be working with the principled BSDF unless you're doing something kind of complex. But I'm gonna go ahead and put this back to being a green material for right now. And um, we'll go ahead and call that good at the moment. And so let's say that we wanted to create something that has like a texture material applied to it. Um, and this is the simplest way you can do this. You can also get a little bit more complex a little later on, but I'm just gonna do a shift A and I'm gonna add a cube in here. I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller, move it down. But let's say I wanted to add a material in here or a texture in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new material just like this. Well, in this case, you can either make this change here or in the shader editor. We're not gonna focus too much about the shader editor right now, but just note that if you want to, instead of using the little drop down over here um, in order to change these, you can also plug nodes into these. So you can use this in order to apply different data or different information in here, right? You can use this to do math, other things like that. For this video, we're just going to do something very simple. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go download a material image from the website Polyhaven. So to do that, you can just go into the assets section under textures and let's just pick a material. It doesn't really matter which one. Let's go with uh, maybe the short bricks floor. You can pick whatever you want. But notice how if I click in here, this gives me the ability to download materials at different resolutions. And then I can also set what kind of file it's going to create and which maps it downloads. We'll talk about PBR maps probably in the second video, but you can plug different maps into those different slots in order to get a more realistic result. But for now, we're just going to unzip this file and bring it into Blender. And so notice how when we download this and just and extract it, we get different maps in here. In this case, for example, we wanna bring in the diffuse map. The diffuse map is just going to be the color map that is the image that makes up a texture. So what I wanna do is I just wanna go back into Blender. I want to, under my base color, click on the little yellow dot, and I'm going to select an image texture. And so when I do that, what that's going to do is that's going to set the color map of your object to be an image texture. Well, what I can do is I can come in here and I can open an image. And in this case, I wanna go in and I wanna open up this diffuse map right here. Well, notice how when I do that, what that does is that takes that texture image that's in here and it actually applies it to my object like this. And so what it's doing is it's basically repeating this texture image over and over again on this surface. Now there's a bunch of things you can do with nodes and other things like that in order to make this bigger or smaller. You could also adjust this using the UV editor. So basically the UV editor is a tool that allows you to create UVs. So I'm going to rotate around. Over here, I'm gonna do a Z. I'm just tapping the Z on my keyboard and I'm gonna go to material preview. Um, but basically what this does is the UV editor allows you to set the way that objects tile on surfaces, which can affect the size of the materials, right? So if I scale this up, 
or down, notice how the size of the material that's mapped on here is adjusted by UVs. We'll get more in depth on those in a future video as well, but for now, just know that you can use images in order to apply textures to objects in here. And these are going to act in a very similar way. Like if we were to go back to our original image right here, what we could do is we could click the little drop down here and we could go find that material, which I think was material six, and we can apply that to this object as well. So we can link multiple different uh, objects to this material. But what this does is this gives you the ability to create a ton of different kind of textures and materials inside of Blender. Okay, so in the next video, we're gonna talk about how to more completely set up those PBR materials so you can create realistic, renderable materials inside of Blender. I will link to the entire materials playlist at the cgessentials.com slash materials. Leave a comment below. Let me know if you have any questions about anything we talked about. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.